today we're going to talk about butterfly fish. Let's get started talking about butterfly fish. Now today I'm only going to talk about a small handful of butterflies, but that's just that I don't see that much variety when it comes to butterfly fish in the aquarium trade hobby. However, out in the wild, butterfly fish have the second highest hybridization rate of most um, groups of fish that are out there. So it kind of gives you an idea that what I'm going to talk about today is just the small tip of the iceberg for the diversity that's out there in the wild. As always, I like to break things down into groups and today is no different. So let's get started with our first group, the reef safe butterfly. And there's only one in that category, that's the zoster butterfly. Next up is our reef safe with caution. Um, you can keep these guys in reef tanks, but just be wary. Some of them um, are known for eating Aptasia, but they might also go after some of your invertebrates and things like worms or if you have any feather dusters and uh, might not be safe with some of these guys. So first off is the copper band butterfly fish. I feel like if you have heard butterfly fish, the copper band is probably what comes to mind when you think of butterflies. Next up is going to be the long nose butterfly. We have the Mullery butterfly and the Marginalis butterfly. Our last group is going to be the butterfly fish that are not reef safe. And again, this is just a small number of the butterfly fish that are out there. So first off is the Klein's butterfly. You have the four eye, the raccoon. You've got a double banded butterfly, the pearl scale. That's one of my favorite. I love their color and their pattern. And lastly, the Heniocus. Now, if you've ever seen a Moorish idol fish, they're beautiful. They have the black and white stripes with the dorsal fin that has a real long uh, streamer on it. Heniocus is a good um, switch. It's, they're a lot more hardy than the Moorish idol, so that's a good substitute if you've ever wanted a Moorish idol. Consider getting a Heniocus. Okay, now that wraps up all the ones that I want to talk about. Now, as a group, Butterfly fish are relatively chill fish. They're great fish to have in community tanks. They get along relatively well with everyone. And when it comes to size, they're all gonna stay within like three inches of each other. So approximately six inches to nine inches is about the largest that at least these are going to get. And when it comes to tank size, I would recommend about 125 gallon tank size and up if you have the space. Okay, let's go to the kitchen and talk a little bit about diet and nutrition. Let's get started talking about the nutrition that your butterfly fish need to stay healthy. Now, I mentioned before, a lot of these butterflies that I'm talking about are not reef safe. And out in the wild, a good majority of the species, in fact, aren't reef safe. Now, in the wild, they're going to be out there cruising along those coral reefs, they're going to be eating lots of coral. And as they're eating the coral, they're getting little bits of vegetables and different types of seaweed and algae as they're eating those corals. So while they're considered meat eaters, because they do get those little bits of veggie from all of those algaes, they also can be considered omnivores, which is a good reason that you need to have a good, well-balanced diet for your butterflies and have a good bit of variety in the foods that you're feeding them. When it comes to different foods and different options, you've got several out there. So let's start with the dry foods. First off, um, you have flake foods. There's a variety of different flakes out there that you can get. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend these for an auto feeder, but if you are going to be hand feeding, flakes are great. Next up is going to be pellet foods. Again, there's a whole bunch of different pellet foods that are out there on the market. Um, if you've already got a pellet food that you love that you feed your other fish, why not just go ahead and stick with that one? Just make sure that when you get them, the pellet size is going to be small enough to fit in your butterfly fish's mouth. You don't want to get something that's too big and hard for them to eat. The next type of foods that you have that you can use to feed are going to be what I like to call the DIY foods. Now, I don't feel like a lot of people out there in the hobby take advantage of these DIY foods, so to speak, but I'm going to tell you about them. So you have ones like Mastic. They kind of, when you open them up, they look like little gummies that you kind of smash and you can put along the rock work or on the glass of your tank. So that's one. Another one that you have is uh, New Life Spectrum, as well as some other companies. This just happens to be the one I have. They make a gel mix. They also make a dough that allows you to add um, 
certain portions of water and powder together. And in addition, you can also add medications in there. So that's one good thing that I love about these products. Another DIY food option that you have is something like Dr. Tim's Beneficial. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a video a little bit later on that tells you how to make all of these DIY foods so that you can get comfortable with using them. But the way it works is you mix, again, some of the powdered food with a liquid, and then you can add all sorts of fun things. They've got all of these like add-ins and mixers that you can use. And again, if you need to use medication in there, you can definitely do that as well. Now, I did mention that they are omnivores, so they do need some of those veggies in their diets. Now, you can use uh, this red seaweed by Two Little Fishies, but you can also use any of the other seaweeds that are out there on the market. There's a huge variety of them as well. Um, and this is just a fun way that you can uh, enrich their lives and give them a little bit of something else to eat. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about enrichment later on. Now our last group of foods is going to be the frozen foods, right? So this is P.E. Mysis. Um, this is a good food that I would recommend for a bunch of different fish, but butterfly fish, uh, it's really good for them as well. It's got a lot of flavor to it, and I've known a lot of butterflies to be relatively picky when it comes to food, but I've had success with P.E. Mysis when they weren't eating. Another option, or two options that you have, um, so we got uh, krill and we have brine shrimp and other great options that are out there. And when it comes to frozen foods, a lot of it just depends on what is available in the market in your area. Some of these might not be available, like for example this one. I don't see this in a lot of local fish stores or even um, online either, but it is out there and it's a great option. Now the last one that I have to share with you is the um, San Francisco Bay brand, the Reef Multipack. This is great if you've got a lot of different fish that are in your aquarium um, and you're feeding a whole bunch of different ones. One that I really like for butterfly is these uh, fish eggs that are right here. It's probably kind of hard to see, but they're really small. And when the uh, little blister breaks down in the water column, those are gonna float around and give the butterflies something fun to chase after and to go eat, in addition to the fact that they're packed full of nutrition. Now, nutrition isn't the only thing that you need to keep an eye on to make sure that your fish are healthy. There's several issues that butterfly fish as a group face. So let's go talk about those to make sure your fish are living a long, healthy life. When it comes to keeping butterfly fish, there are several issues that I want you to be prepared for to keep an eye out so that you are ready to combat them and have your butterfly fish live a long, successful life. Now, throughout the course of this video, I've mentioned several times about how those not reef safe or those coral eating butterfly fish, um, you know, they can cause problems in reef tanks by eating all the corals, but they can also cause problems when you put them into the Fowler tank for the first time, especially if they're wild caught, they're coming straight from the ocean where they've had that diet of corals all the time to a tank where there's absolutely no corals. You could be feeding them the best frozen food that's out there on the market. You can, you know, be doing all these things and offering them so many options, but honestly, if they were eating corals, they might not eat when they first get to your tank. And there are several different things that you can do to be prepared and to combat that. So first one is garlic, right? Have you ever walked into an Italian restaurant and just like, oh, that smells so good. And you smell the garlic and like the bread and everything. Well, garlic can be used as an appetite stimulant for fish. So there's several different companies out there that make garlic additives. It usually comes in a little bottle with a dropper. You put a couple drops on the food that you're gonna feed, let it soak for a few minutes, and then go ahead and feed. And that will act as a appetite stimulant for those fish. Another product that's on the market that acts like an appetite stimulant for your fish is a product by Seachem. It's called Entice. Now you guys, this is really crazy. It smells like bananas or banana runs. It's a very, very odd smell when you think of aquariums and fish, but every single time I've used that, I'm telling you, it works like a charm. So if you find some of the sea chems entice, I highly recommend getting a bottle of it. It works great for those picky eaters. Now, the next thing you can do when it comes to picky eating is you can start them off. So 
Here is a dead coral frag right. If you don't have any, you probably could ask your local fish store for them. Or, you know, there's a bunch of hobbyists that have, I'm sure, coral frags, the dead, dead corals laying around. Um, you can put things like that mastic that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can put little bits of that on the piece of coral to help simulate that natural feeding behavior that they would have experienced out in the wild. Now, when you're doing that, I would recommend taking some of the frozen food that you're going to be feeding them eventually that you want to get them on and soaking the other food in the juices of that frozen food and then putting them on. So as they're eating that stuff or they're picking at it, they're getting little bits of that flavor of the food that you want them to be eating later on. And hopefully that'll help transition them into eating some other foods. Now, Eating and picky eaters is not the only problem that I've seen with butterfly fish. A lot of issues I've seen are water quality issues. They can be relatively sensitive to high nitrates and nitrates, which is why it's important. Always make sure you're testing your water and doing your water changes as needed. Now, butterfly fish are no different than any other fish when it comes to adding them to your tank. So I recommend quarantining. If you've got the ability to quarantine, please quarantine your fish. If not, and even if you do, I do recommend a Safety Stop by Blue Life USA. These little guys are great at helping to get rid of any parasites and uh, diseases or bacteria that might be hanging out on your fish before you add it to your tank. It'll just help give them that little boost that they need to stay healthy and be around for a long time. Now, another way to help your fish live a nice, good, long life um, is enriching it, adding different things to their life to make it interesting. And that can be as simple as changing the water flow, right? Now, a lot of power heads that are out there, they have the controllers that allow you to adjust the flow. But if you don't have one of those, another option is the uh, Vivid Creative Aquatics. They have these random flow generator nozzles. You just pop them on your lock line and it automatically changes the flow throughout the tank, um, various intervals works phenomenal. So I recommend one of those if you don't have those power heads or those flow generators. Something else you can do, I mentioned earlier, you can use those corals to add different kinds of feeding enrichment. You can also add some of that nori to the feeding clip and move those clips around. Now, if you are dealing with the butterfly fish in a fowler tank, those not reef safe butterflies, you can move the tank around. You can reorganize and redecorate. Imagine if you are in your home and you redecorate your house, how new and different and exciting it's going to feel. Your fish will experience a lot of the same feelings like, oh, this is a new fun place, new spots for me to explore. So those are a few options for enrichment that you can use. But if you've tried other methods, leave a comment below. Let me know. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to enrichment is tank mates, right? That's another way that you can diversify your fish's life. Seems silly to say that, but it really does help them to live a long life. Now, butterfly fish are relatively peaceful fish, which means they're gonna be well suited for community habitats. Now, I wouldn't put them with the more aggressive, some of those um, fish like puffer fish, they have big personalities. Those guys might not get along and the same goes with uh, a lot of triggers or even say lionfish, but they will get along relatively well with some of those damsels, um, cardinal fish, are another good one. If you're unsure, and this goes for any fish that you purchase and any invertebrate, always do your research. Go look for the fish compatibility chart. There's a freshwater one and a saltwater one. That's the one you're looking for. Find the butterfly fish and the other fish that you're looking for in that chart and see if they would make a good match. That's all I've got for you today. If you have any videos that you would love to see, leave a comment below. Let me know what you can't wait to learn about. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.